at the core of feeling this way is feeling like you are just afraid and that you won't be loved or you won't be accepted or you won't be worthy if you're not perfect. Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Roshni and this channel is called Betty Grew Up. So I wanted to talk about um, why it sucks being the cool one, the kind of attitude that you are too cool for school or, you know, that you're the coolest one in the room so you don't really associate with the people around you. Um, just kind of the attitude that you're better than everyone around you. Just the idea that you're kind of over it, right? Like everything is like, nothing really excites you. You're just kind of apathetic towards everything and so you know I was kind of reflecting on having this attitude in the first place and where the idea comes from and there's so many you know traits in myself that strive for perfection and strive to be the best or that you know cringe and judge other people when they mess up and you know one of the first signs of judging other people is you know, how you actually treat yourself. And if you are able to say those things about another person or critique another person's grammar or another person's style or, you know, just kind of how they present themselves, whatever it might be, you most likely have those same thoughts about yourself. You know, you're probably really harsh on how you see yourself. Um, you probably, you know, say mean things to yourself all the time or judge your own style or, you know, give yourself a lot of crap for not looking great one day or not having it all together. I know sometimes even if, like, my clothes are wrinkled I'm like god why don't I just like steam them or take the extra time to do something about it and all those judgmental thoughts can pretty much stop you from wanting to do anything new or try anything that's out of your comfort zone you know but when you think about you know this kind of perfectionist mindset and this desire and need to be perfect and this idea of this really cool person attitude and kind of wanting to be over everything and feeling like you're better than all this stuff and like you don't need to be a part of it the thoughts that all of these mentalities have in common is that, you know, you're too scared to try, you're too scared to be vulnerable, you're too scared to fail, you're too scared to, you know, try something new or to look stupid in front of other people. And, you know, what, when you look even closer at those ideas, it's kind of the idea that you're not good enough, that you won't be good enough if you fail at something, that you won't be good enough if you're not perfect, that, you know, you are not going to be loved or you're not going to be accepted by people around you if you fail or if you mess up or, you know, if, if you're not good at something. And I know that, you know, sometimes we do have real people in our lives that say these kinds of things. You know, sometimes our parents are putting all this pressure on us to be perfect or it could even be, you know, a significant other or your kind of ideas about family and that whole concept is pressuring you to feel like you have to be the perfect mom or the perfect dad. And, you know, these, these thoughts are are valid and these things do come up but you have to realize that at the core of feeling this way is feeling like you are just afraid and that you won't be loved or you won't be accepted or you won't be worthy if you're not perfect and if you're not good enough and so you know when we adopt this cooler than thou attitude or this cooler than everything attitude we're kind of saying that you know, I'm too scared to try. I'm too scared to get involved. I'm too scared to really, you know, be that close to you. I'm too scared to let you see my vulnerabilities. Um, but I'm just kind of here and I'm just kind of going to distance myself because if I'm far away, then you can't really see the real me. And so you're almost admitting that as a weakness from the start, right? You're telling people, well, you know, I'm, I'm already damaged or I'm already this way. So you just need to stay away from me. But, you know, you put on this air of being being cool or kind of being mysterious or not le leading on a lot about yourself, but it's because internally you know that you're afraid. You're afraid to look stupid. You're afraid to, you know, fail in front of everyone. You don't want everyone to see, you know, where where you might be messed up or what mistakes you might have made. And, you know, it's understandable because we're just trying to protect ourselves, right? We just want to make sure that we're not going to be heartbroken or that our trust isn't going to be broken or that we're not going to be made fun of. And that does come out of self-preservation. But over time, if you're building up this wall and saying that, you know, you're too cool to get involved in your job or to get involved in your community, you're too cool to really have 
Oh my gosh, sorry about that guys. So my memory card died and I didn't realize till I was done filming the last take. So I'm refilming um, part of this video, but um, yeah, so when you really feel like you are too cool to participate in your community or to, you know, get involved with your loved ones and at your job and, you know, you're afraid to reach out, you're really putting yourself in a box and you're kind of limiting what you can do. You're limiting the scope of your life. And yes, it's okay if in life you don't want to do every single thing. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying that when you really only allow yourself a very small comfort zone, you're not really living life. You're kind of putting yourself in like this mental prison because you're afraid. You're kind of boxing yourself in because of fear. And you know, obviously that's not good. And again, like I said, it is a coping mechanism. It's something that you can definitely, you know, grow from and that you can learn ways to deal with it. And you can kind of taper some of those habits off, you know, in uh, later on in life. And that's something that therapy is great for. That's something that, you know, you can definitely work with a therapist and a life coach to help you uh, kind of modify your behaviors and figure out how to deal with these things in a healthy way and to kind of regrow that comfort zone and to build that confidence in yourself, but it's really ironic because we think of the cool person as, you know, the, the kind of mysterious one who can get away with whatever they want and, you know, but when you have that kind of reckless behavior and you feel like you can get away with anything, you're being a little bit narcissistic and you're still kind of showcasing that idea of fear. Like when you're not allowing yourself to get involved and you're not taking on these new um, hobbies or you're not trying anything new or anything different, you're selling yourself short, right? Like. If if you have the ability and if you have the resources to try anything new at all, whether it's free or whether it's a thousand dollars, you should, you know, it's your life. You should try new things. You should do new things. You should, you know, be out with people that you love and, you know, spending time with people that mean a lot to you. And, you know, there's no point in doing the same thing every single day if you're free and willing and able to you know, try new things. Like, that's what life is all about. That's where the joy and the excitement in life comes from. And when you are boxing yourself away from all these things and saying that, you know, you don't want X, Y, and Z, and it, and the core of it is because of fear, and you know if it is, like, that's something that you have to answer. It's a question that you have to answer for yourself, but if you really know that you're staying away from things because of fear, you are essentially selling yourself short, right? You're not allowing yourself to experience the full breath of life because of your own fears and your own setbacks, essentially. And so people sell themselves short when they don't believe in themselves, when they don't have high self-esteem, when they don't feel like they can approach a situation and if they fail, everything's still going to be okay. And I'm not talking about taking crazy risks or doing something that you would never in a million years do, but if there is something that you want to do or something that you feel like would be exciting, then take that opportunity. Don't be too cool for it. Don't put put shit off. Um, you know, take the chance to really make it happen and be vulnerable and be afraid and realize that you could fail and do it anyway because that's kind of the power and that's the strength that you're going to find in yourself that you're going to look back on and it's what's going to make the whole process so much more rewarding again but I really hope that you enjoyed this video let me know what you thought in the comments down below and if you did enjoy make sure to give it a thumbs up and to subscribe hit that notification bell so you get reminded of when my videos actually do come out and otherwise I love you all very much I will see you next week happy healing